Hey, so today I wanted to conduct a little experiment. I wanted to see what would happen if we take this diamond tester and we put it on a lab-grown diamond. For comparison, we're going to be diamond testing three different stones. On the left, we have a natural or mined diamond. Here in the middle, we have a lab-grown diamond. This was formed by humans in a laboratory. Lastly, we have a cubic zirconia, or CZ. In order to conduct this test, I'll be using a brand new diamond tester from Jamaro. I just really like this brand, they're not sponsoring this video by any means. This is a really nice diamond tester, it's a brand new model, it starts at $250, so in other words, spared no expense. I'm super excited to test some stones, so let's unbox this thing. So here's the diamond tester. This one's really cool because it simultaneously tests for diamond, moissanite, and white sapphire. At the end of this diamond tester, there's a metal tip. This uses thermal conductivity to test the stones. Basically, it sends a signal to the stone and the stone has a chance to respond. It also uses LED and UV fluorescence detection. It's a very reliable method for testing diamonds. This chart gives us a quick rundown on how the tester will react. It will turn green if it's a diamond, blue if it's a moissanite, pink if it's a sapphire, and red if you happen to be touching metal on no stone at all. If the stone you're testing is a fake or a synthetic stone, the tester will not react at all. It will just give you no signal. Now that we've covered how the diamond tester works, let's just jump into it. We're going to start with testing this natural diamond. Diamond. Well, that was certainly expected. Let's do it one more time for good measure. Diamond. Next, we're going to test this cubic zirconia. I'm pushing the diamond tester into the stone, and it's not giving me any reading at all. This is what people generally think of when they think of a fake diamond. You know, something like a CZ or a cubic zirconia. Something that's just glass and not a diamond at all. After multiple attempts, it's still not testing, so it's safe to assume not a diamond. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, will this lab-grown diamond test as a real diamond? According to this tester, this is a diamond. And you know what? According to a lot of other experts as well, this is a real diamond. A lab-grown diamond is a diamond. Diamond, 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 diamond. Another great thing about lab-grown diamonds is they are also graded in the same way that natural stones are, and that is by something called the four C's, which are carrot, clarity, color, and cut. In short, lab-grown diamonds are not flawless. They're not perfect diamonds. They have inclusions, they have imperfections, just like real diamonds do. The only difference between a mined diamond and a lab-grown diamond is where they're made. And obviously, lab-grown diamonds are made in a lab, and natural diamonds are formed in the earth. Other than that, they are 100% chemically identical to each other, and not only chemically identical, visually identical. Even gemologists who have been trained over many, many years cannot tell the difference visually not with a microscope, not with a loop, anything like that. They can't tell the difference between a lab-grown diamond and a mined diamond. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why I tell people that they are a good choice and what are the clear advantages to choosing a lab-grown diamond. The first has to be the fact that lab-grown diamonds are 100% conflict-free. We've all heard the nasty term blood diamond, and of course not every natural diamond out there is a blood diamond, but just the fact that that term even exists is super gut-wrenching, and I'm so excited that lab-grown diamonds, you can be 100% certain that no conflict was involved in the production of your stone. The second reason why I love lab-grown diamonds is that no mining is required at all to produce them. Instead of removing tons and tons of dirt and earth and material just to find these stones, we can grow them in a controlled setting. Not only that, but we can completely take the human element out of it when it, when it comes to the poor conditions that miners are experiencing all over the world. Of course, there's some good mines out there that are better than others. It really depends on where you're at. But just the fact that we can remove that aspect completely is something that I think is a clear advantage. You know, there's not greedy people out there taking advantage of miners and the labor that they provide. And if I haven't quite sold you with the ethics aspect of it yet, 
let's talk about something we can all relate to and that is cold hard cash. <laughs> and we all know that saving money is a great thing. Um, in fact, I'm gonna pick that up really quick. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Lab grown diamonds are 20 to 40% less expensive. So you're gonna pay less for the exact same thing. It looks the same. It technically is the same chemically and you get to skip the human element, you get to skip the mine, and you get money in your pocket. It's really just a win-win-win situation. For good measure, let's just test these stones again one last time, side by side in subsequent order. No cutting, no jump cuts, just so we can see what happens. Diamond. Diamond. Diamond, diamond, not diamond. I hope you learned something about lab-grown diamonds today. Diamond. They really are beautiful stones, something you can also take pride in when wearing one on your finger.